Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to be showcasing an extremely meta team. I can't believe how many 5-0s and how many positive sets I got with this team and I got an extremely high win rate, almost 80% win rate with this team. So this team is as meta as it gets. We already ran Spice at the beginning of the season but I was getting destroyed, everyone else was running meta so if they want meta, they're gonna get meta. We're running Shadow Gligar. Defense Form Deoxys and Metacham, and let me tell you, this team is extremely strong. The battles I'm going to be showing are from the past three or four days, so I've actually climbed quite a bit with this team. I'm currently rank 17 and I'm still running it, and it's still performing extremely well. And as long as you know your move counts, you throw out perfect timing, you manage your energy well, and you play this team perfectly, this team will take you really far. The team's biggest weakness is ghost types, and I was running Gligar at first with Dig, but then I realized I don't really need Dig on a double counter team because the backline can handle the seal types. So what I did was I switched Dig to Night Slash to handle those ghost types, and it actually did really well against like the Jellicent and the Frost Lasses, and you'll see in some of the, the later matches how that goes. And what I realized from these games was a lot of people weren't ready for Deoxys uh, safe swap, so in a lot of instances I would swap Deoxys and my opponent would just immediately back out. But that's enough on that, let's get into these games. First up we have Gligar into Machamp. Gligar is amazing versus Machamp. If this Machamp is running Rock Slide, he should have actually built up to it because the Rock Slide is neutral, whereas Cross Chop is resisted. I'm going to be throwing this Aerial Ace and most likely I'm not expecting a shield here because his Machamp's already low. Now my opponent brings in Pseudo Wudo and I'm going to throw a Dig. If it goes unshielded, it will come close to taking him out. It goes unshielded, but that's okay because we have two counter users in the back. Then my opponent brings out the core breaker for this team, which is Jellicent. He only builds up to the Surf, so I don't have to shield it, which is interesting that he only built up to the Surf. I go for these Thunderbolts, fully expecting the shields, but I don't want to go for a Psycho Goose because I don't want to debuff myself. My opponent throws another Surf, I'm also not going to shield, going for the second Thunderbolt, and I'm expecting it to take his last shield. And this is where I decided, you know what, maybe I should be running Night Slash on Gligar. I was like, I, I don't really have anything for Jellicent, so we end up switching it to Night Slash. Uh, now this dig, I'm going to throw it on this Jellicent, and it's going to do a ton of damage, but it's still not enough to take him out. But we manage to wing attack down, and we take that win. On to the next match, we have another amazing lead. We have Gligar into Beedrill. Beedrill has nothing it can throw at Gligar. My opponent brings in Umbreon, and I'm just going to chip it before I swap into my Metacham. So, chipping with these Aerial Aces, and now I can bring in Metacham, and these counters are going to be doing super effective. And the foul plays are neutral because of Metacham's Psychic and Fighting Typing. However, my opponent went for a Psychic there first, which is interesting. The right play against Metacham is to go straight for those foul plays. Because remember, Umbreon is a dark type and foul play is a dark type move, therefore it's getting stab, which is the same type attack bonus on that move. And now my opponent brings back in Beedrill and doesn't shield my Psychic. Again, Psychic is going to be doing super effective against Beedrill's poison typing, and he lets it go, bringing in Obstagoon now, and this is basically game over for my opponent because I have another counter user in the back. Even though Deoxys is a Psychic type and Obstagoon is a dark type, Deoxys beats Obstagoon because of that counter damage and because of its bulk, allowing it to take these Night Slashes really easily. So I'm able to counter down this Obstagoon and Beedrill comes in, it's 1 HP, 1 counter takes it out, and GG's to my opponent, we take that win. Oh, and this was one of the sets I got a 5-0 in. Like I said, I was getting so many 5-0s with this team. But on to the next match, we have a Stunfisk lead. Now, I'm okay with staying in this because I still have Dig on Gligar, so pretty much everything on my team can handle Stunfisk pretty decently. So what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to bait, but my opponent calls the bait and does not shield. The Aerial Ace goes unshielded and it does resisted damage to Sunfisk. I do catch the next Rock Slide on my Deoxys, however, and my opponent brings in Gramble, which is perfect. This is exactly where I want to see the Gramble. We don't want it aligned with Metacham. Now, I am going to build up to two Cycle Boosts and I'm going to throw them both. My opponent shields the first one, and is he going to shield the second one? He ends up shielding the second one. That's because Gramble is pretty glassy and can't really take any moves, but now my opponent is down two shields, and I can throw this Aerial Ace. It's going to KO. My opponent's going to bring back Stunfisk, and I am actually going to catch the next Rock Slide on my Metacham. 
I probably didn't need to make this play because he was in dig range, but I did it anyways. We caught the rock slide and my opponent breaks in Talonflame and because he's two shields down and I'm two shields up, I can actually win that matchup. So my opponent surrenders. But on to the next match, we have Gligar into Jellicent, the core breaker of this team. So I am going to stay in with Gligar and I'm going to try to do as much damage as I can to this Jellicent. It's going to be a team effort to take out this Pokemon. I'm going to go straight for these Aerial Aces. I think he shields the first one expecting maybe the dig, but I still go for the Aerial Ace on the second move because I recognize that the Jellicent still needs two moves to get taken out. I attempt to catch a Surf on Deoxys because I don't want to use both my shields and now all I need is to throw the Psycho Boost and hope that he doesn't shield. I do however end up investing my final shield anyways to take out this Jellicent and I throw the Psycho Boost. Thankfully it goes unshielded and it takes out the Jellicent. Now we have the most dangerous Pokemon out of the way for this team. My opponent brings in Registeel, which is completely fine. These counters are going to be doing super effective, although we are debuffed from that Psycho Boost, but the chip damage is still nice to have. Now I'm thinking if I should bring in Medicham or Gligar. I decide to go with Gligar because I remember I have a little bit of energy on Gligar and I can reach a dig before he reaches a move. And this dig should be enough to KO the Registeel. Now my opponent brings in Medicham and I can reach an Aerial Ace before he takes me out. This will grab his last shield, and now with his shields out of the way, I can swap into my own Metacham and start building up to those Psychics. He has an energy advantage, however, so he's going to be able to reach two moves, and I'm only going to be able to reach one. But this Psychic should put him into a range where the counters from my own Metacham and the wing attacks from my 1 HP Gligar in the back should be able to just be enough to take him out. And we take that win. It was a lot closer, though. But on to the next match, we have a Victory Bell lead, an interesting lead, but my opponent decides to swap into Sableye and my backline is super weak to Sableye, so I'm so happy he brought it out here for me. And now I'm gonna stay in this matchup and I'm actually going to double shield Gligar because I need to win this lead. So I'm gonna go straight for the Aerial Aces and this is actually where Night Slash kind of came in handy because Night Slash is less energy and I can reach more of those against Sableye match matchups. We both end up investing both our shields. I farm up as much as I can before throwing the next Aerial Ace because remember, maximizing energy is key to making this team work. Now my opponent brings back in Victory Bell and I immediately swap into Medicham just worried that he might be able to farm down Gligar from that range and Metacham can reach an Ice Punch and take out Victory Bell. And then my opponent surrenders. Unfortunately, we never get to know what he had in the back, but I'm gonna assume it's a Bastiodon because Victory Bell and Bastiodon kind of go hand in hand. So GG's to my opponent. Moving on to the next match, we have Gligar into Metacham. Another one lead. Unfortunately, Metacham has Ice Punch, which is double super effective to Gligar. We go for this first Aerial Ace and it goes unshielded and now I want to farm him down all the way so I am going to invest my one shield. It ends up being a power punch unfortunately so we get baited by that. We didn't need to shield that and then my opponent brings in Pelipper. Now I want to try to chip his damage before I swap into a different Pokemon. My opponent ends up shielding the Aerial Ace because Pelipper is super squishy. But then my opponent farms up a little bit of energy and swaps out of Pelipper into Stunfisk and this is actually fine. We can do as much chip damage as we can to the Stunfisk before bringing in Medicham. So now my opponent is going to throw this Earthquake. It's not going to be quite enough to KO but it's going to put, put us in a range where we're in farm down range for the Stunfisk but that's fine because Earthquake was nerfed and these Earthquakes are not going to be doing as much to Medicham. I'm going to go for the full farm down saving that shield for the Pelipper. So we manage to farm down the Stunfisk and we leave with a ton of energy, but here I make a big mistake and instead of going for the Psychic, I go for the Ice Punch. I should be going for the Psychic because A, I can't reach another move anyways, and B, I need to either take the Pelipper out or take his shields. If he doesn't shield, the Psychic would have done enough damage to him to put him in a range where I can wing attack down pretty easily. Now bringing back in Gligar, I had to commit to the fast move down because I didn't want my opponent sneaking in wing attacks and I needed to get in as many wing attacks as possible so that my wing attacks combined with the counter from my Metacham would be able to take out the Pelipper and that was super close. And that game was part of another set where we got a 5-0. So doing pretty well. I'm pretty impressed with this team. 
then again, it could just be doing well because it's early season. All right, moving on to the next match. Don't mess up in front of the popular streamer. I'm not scared. <laughs> of course we get the worst lead ever when we are facing someone who's streaming. We get an Obama Snow lead, I immediately swap into Deoxys. It looks like my opponent doesn't have the best answer to Deoxys though. They swap in Kanto Ninetales and I'm assuming it's gonna be running Scorching Sands and Weather Ball. These Weather Balls are doing a ton of damage though. My first Thunderbolt gets shielded and I throw Psycho Boost before my opponent decides to throw another move. Instead, my opponent is going to farm me down and have a ton of energy for Gligar, which I'm going to bring back in. But my opponent used both shields, so I have that advantage. He throws the first Weather Ball and I let it go, and I thought he was going to CMP time me on my next move. I went back and I checked his stream, it turns out he miscounted. So I was able to get the Night Slash off. I would have liked to see how the match would have played out if my opponent had thrown a Weather Ball and taken out my Gligar. But he has a Metacham in the back, and with two shields down, he would have lost the mirror to my Metacham, so good games, and it was nice battling you. On to the next match, we have a really amazing lead versus a Metacham. My opponent immediately swaps into Lickitung, and the way I like to play this out is I like to chip a little bit with an Aerial Ace, and then I'm going to swap into my uh, Metacham. My opponent's going to be throwing these Body Slams, and these Licks are actually doing a ton to my Metacham, but my goal is going to be to counter him down completely, and it's going to get super, super close, but at least if I counter him down, I'm going to have a ton of energy for whatever he brings in next. He's probably going to bring in Metacham, and I'm going to throw the Psychic immediately. I think one counter takes us out here. It does. Then I bring in my Gligar, but he brings in Diggersby. I decide to stay in because his Diggersby is running Mudshot, and this matchup is actually pretty favorable for Gligar as long as I shield the Hyper Beams correctly. So my opponent has enough energy for it and now I have to make a call. I just need to hope that this isn't Scorching Sands because Scorching Sands does nothing to Gligar because Gligar is a flying type. Now I'm going to go for the Night Slashes because Night Slash is the lower energy move and I am expecting to start seeing those shields now. And he only has Metacham in the back left and I know that I can beat Metacham with the Oxus, which is why I actually stayed in that matchup uh, against uh, Diggersby with my Gligar. I do manage to make a nice catch on the Ice Punch on Deoxys, and once my opponent sees the Deoxys, he decides to surrender. GG's to my opponent, that was kind of RPS. On to the next match, we have Gligar into Alolan Ninetales. So this is actually a bad lead for me, but I can't really swap out because I have Metacham in the back. So I wait to see what fast move it's running. It's running Charm, so I can actually kind of stay in with Gligar here. I built up enough energy for a dig and then I threw Aerial Ace and that got his first shield and then I swapped in Deoxys and again it's looking like my opponent doesn't have the best answer to Deoxys so he stayed in with Alolan Ninetales and tried to do as much damage as he could and then he brings in Metacham having seen what I had in front which was a hard counter and he's just gonna go for these Ice Punches because I'm in range after the Alolan Ninetales did quite a bit of damage to me and now he's gonna farm me down which is really dangerous I have to come in and I have to commit a shield because, again, Ice Punch is going to take us out and I'm going to commit to the farm down now, but my opponent doesn't let me farm him down. He swaps immediately into Ninetales. Luckily, I reach the move and I'm going to shield here because his Alolan Ninetales is still quite healthy and I know that I can make it to another aer Aerial Ace and this Aerial Ace should take him out. And that way, my Metacham is not seeing his Alolan Ninetales. I immediately swap into Metacham so that my opponent does not get an energy lead on me. And now all I need to do is reach the Psychic. The Psychic is going to be enough to take out my opponent's Swampert, and these counters are going to be enough to take out the Metacham, and the Metacham is energy dry. So GG's to my opponent, we take that win. That was a tricky match though. Oh hey, another 5-0. I'm telling you guys, this team is so good. I kind of wish I had been running this team from the beginning of the season so that I could know what my exact win rate was. But yeah, we're doing pretty well with it now and I can't wait until I run this team after I get ranked. Alright, moving on we have a Diggersby lead and it looks like my opponent might have been running much hot because he swapped out immediately. My opponent swaps in Clefable and I choose to stay in because Gligar can actually outpace Clefable to its charge moves and I also wasn't too sure about 
how the Deoxys and Clefable matchup is. I was worried that I would lose that, but also uh, I'm not too concerned about swapping out because what I have in the back can counter Diggersby and my lead can counter Diggersby, so I'm fine. But then my opponent has the Frost Blast in the back and he manages to catch the Night Flash on his Diggersby, but because Diggersby is running Mudshot, I farm up a little bit of energy so I leave with a Night Flash and now I can bring in Metachamp. Swapping out with a Night Flash on Gligar is going to be key to me winning the game. Against Diggersby, I'm going to try to farm up as much energy as I can and I'm only going to throw one Ice Punch, that way I'm leaving the match with a ton of energy to throw at Frost Glass or to pressure Frost Glass to throw all its energy, which works out in our favor. The Frost Glass ends up throwing an Avalanche on Metacham so that it doesn't have to take a Psychic and so that it doesn't have to use its last shield. I will, however, come in with Deoxys and take its final shield with this Thunderbolt. And now that I've taken its final shield, I can come in with this Night Slash and this should be enough to take out the Frost Glass. We take out the Pokemon that was a huge core breaker to this team. On to the next match, we have Gligar into Alolan Sand Slash, one of the worst leads I could see. I immediately swap into Deoxys and it seems like my opponent doesn't have, again, the best answer to Deoxys because they swap in Azumarill and Deoxys actually beats Azumarill. My opponent shields my first Thunderbolt and I decide to invest the shield as well because I absolutely have to win this switch. My opponent is going to invest his second shield. I decide to do the same because as long as my Metacham is aligned to his Alolan Sand Slash, then it should be good. And also, I read that I think he has a Metacham in the back. That might be why he swapped in Azumarill into Deoxys, because Deoxys beats both uh, Metacham and Azumarill. Deoxys also beats Alolan Sand Slash, so this whole team is weak to Deoxys. I'm gonna go for this last Thunderbolt, which should take out Azu. Now I need to see what my opponent's gonna bring in. He brings in Metacham, and he is one counter ahead of us, so I have to CMP tie on the Aerial Ace. As long as I get this damage off, that's all that matters. This Ice Punch actually isn't enough to take us out. My opponent then swaps in Sand Slash, and I immediately swap in Metacham, and I'm gonna farm down all the way. If I farm down all the way, I'm going to be able to have enough energy to throw at the Metacham. My opponent surrenders there, and GG's, we take that win. On to the final match of this video, we lead Gligar into Superior. Remember, since Aerial Ace was buffed, Superior got a buff technically because Superior has access to Aerial Ace. So I'm seeing it a lot more. This is a good lead for us, however, and my opponent lets the Aerial Ace go. Now I can farm him down, but my opponent isn't going to let me. Instead, he brings in Salazzle, which is very spicy. I kind of feel bad running such a hardcore meta team into such a spicy team. This was me two days ago when I was trying to run Spice and everyone else was running meta. It's It kind of sucks to be in this position. But yeah, my opponent surrenders, unfortunately. But I appreciate his team. I thought it was a really nice team. And we get another 5-0. I told you guys, this team is uh, absolutely insane. And I'm still running it in slightly higher ranks right now. We'll see how it performs later on if maybe when I reach Legend, if it will still perform as well. But that brings us to the end of this video. Sorry it was a long one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found it informative. If you guys like my videos, please consider subscribing and maybe leaving a like. It helps me out a ton. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!